Legacy United brings us Sideburn from the Robots in Disguise 2001 line, though you can of course call him Speedbreaker if you prefer the Japanese name. But I don't just have this one. I have the original Sideburn from the Robots in Disguise line back in 2001, and I'm gonna compare these two bit by bit. So again, you can call this one Speedbreaker as well, but he is the US one because you can see the Autobot symbol on his shield, which you can even turn around if you prefer the Autobot symbol to be right side up. So I'm gonna compare these two bit by bit, and you get to tell me which one is better in the comments. I'm Captain Kyle. If you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. If you've been a long time watcher, thank you for your support. All right, let's get into these guys. Be right back. All right, so the Robots in Disguise line was brought into the US to replace the Transtech line that never happened after Beast Machines was not quite the success that Hasbro had hoped it would be. But, you know, we could blame Star Wars on that. There's stories about that. In Japan, they came out with the Car Robots line. This was Speedbreaker, and he had his two brothers who were Mock Alert, and I'm not recalling the third one's name offhand. Wild Ride. I just looked it up. I'm not suddenly getting a good memory. But Wild Ride, who was in the US known as x -Bron. So I'm curious if we're gonna get the others from Robots in Disguise eventually. I have to say that the original Car Robots brothers were pretty amazing in the way that they transformed. So let's though first check out the Legacy one to see if that's pretty amazing. And then we'll get to the original. Now this sideburn is actually a remolded head and recolor of Shadow Striker, which is kind of a, a funny reversal because Shadow Striker, the Botcon edition, was a remolded head and recolor of the original Sideburn slash Speedbreaker. Shitty piece of paper. So looking at the new one, there he is strapped to his car and he's got accessories here in the back. I've given up any hope that it might be something other than accessories, you know, like jewelry or drug or a severed thumb. No, I'm kidding. In the pack, it comes with his shield slash roof of his car. It comes with uh, this bumper and the gun slash blade, but that can apparently hook to the bumper to be like the original crossbow weapon that he had. All right, snip, snip, snip. Let's get him out. Easy enough, though left some shit on my table. So let's get him fully set up with his accoutrement. So the roof shield can go on, looks like either arm. Looks like they are suggesting though that you put it on the right one. I don't like that, I'm gonna put it on the left one. So I have to say, because it's got a little hinge joint here, trying to plug it in is a little more challenging because the hinge wants to bend. But I managed to get it on his arm. Now this gun, he's got open fingers, which means you can slide it down so it's kind of like a knife. Though with a hole in the end, it doesn't look so much like a knife as a unignited lightsaber. Or you can put it in his hand like a gun. You can also take the bumper and plug it into that hole on the end. So it looks kind of like his crossbow weapon, but it does not have a projectile to shoot out. Which is good in the fact that you won't lose a projectile. Bad as it just kind of looks like a battering ram instead of an actual weapon. So it loses a little something there. Now apparently you can take this gun for weapon storage you can flip up this door and it's got a little smaller post to plug it underneath in case he doesn't want to carry his gun. The only other thing you could do with the uh, bumper is put it on his opposite arm as like a smaller shield. So there's the different configurations with him. I should zoom in a little bit as a robot with his accessories. All right, let's take a look at his posability. Now very easily I can already tell full Jean-Claude Van Damme. Though you might want to bend these doors up so he can go down and they actually act like kickstands and keep him in that position. So wee He does have ankle swivels in the extreme. They can move quite a bit, just like Shadow Striker. Kick forward, can kick back, can kick off to the side, bends at the knee, has a nice little kind of rounded cup thing, but that can cause some extra damage if he's kneeing somebody where they would hurt quite a bit. Feels a little stiff, but the leg does swivel all the way around. And as long as you're leaving those, uh, well, you could probably put them down somewhat, but he twists at the waist very easily all the way around. All right, so the arms cannot go all the way around. They are attached at the shoulder to these doors and sides of the car that are hanging down. So it can go up, down, can bend at the knee. We'll even take that off 
and it can swivel, but even though you can go out to the side, you can't go all the way around because of the way the joint is attached. So that's a shame. Head, though, can go all the way around. There we go, not a problem there. The fists themselves, they twist. So some good posability overall with this guy. And you could probably use his knife gun and the bumper as kind of a pickaxe type weapon. So that's a little uh, bonus, I guess. But there he is, one more swivel. But let's take a look at the original and then we'll do a side by side. So this is the original Speed Breaker. Looks a little thinner. And you can see he's got the uh, shield on his arm, the Autobot symbol, which you could have that in that direction, or you can twist it around, have it a little bit lower, just the Autobot symbol would be upside down. And he does have his bumper gun with a projectile. And since this is rid, not bad for shooting. I used to have both Speed Breaker and Sideburn because I bought all the car robots when they came out and then they put them out again. And I bought them anyway even though I had very similar toys, except for, you know, some slight deco changes. So they got me again. What can I do? Um, he's got his gun knife, which can be held two ways. It can be held like a gun, or you can remove it and plug it into his hand like a knife. And that looks much more like a knife than the other weapon. But all right, let's take his weapons off. And unlike the legacy one, the shield actually does not detach, or at least it's not supposed to. It's got a ball joint in there. If you wanted to pop it off, you could. But let's get into seeing, can he do a full Jean-Claude Van Damme? Yes, he can. Of course, the uh, doors and hood in the back there can keep him from flopping. But yes, he does have that capability. Now, with Robots in Disguise, they didn't really have ankle swivels, but the feet were on ball joints. So a little bit, you could position them. And he could kick forward, he could kick back, he could kick to the side, though the kibble here on his leg made it so it couldn't go too far up, so you'd have to use both legs to get someone in the face. Bends at the knee so much that you could basically double over the leg. The feet are on ball joints, so they twist. The lower legs are on ball joints. The uh, So you can basically swivel both the feet and the lower legs entirely around. Nothing with the upper legs. Twists at the waist all the way around. So, so far I'm not seeing much difference in the posability. These guys were amazing when they came out as far as how posable they were. Now the arms, they got a lot of kibble hanging out. That's the one bad thing about these guys. If you wanted to though, you could make the arm go all the way around. You just gotta make sure that you have this back piece positioned so that front bumper doesn't bump into it, even though that's what bumpers are supposed to do. The shield arm can go all the way around too. Just again, you need to make sure that the shield does not hit. I keep pushing his head back. The shield does not hit too much on the back stuff there. So those go all the way around. So that's a plus. And his head does turn all the way around and he can actually look up. So there you have him. The robots in disguise sideburn from the 2001 line. Now, these back pieces hanging out, you could maneuver them in a, many different ways. You just kind of want to stick them out of the way as much as you can. But now let's do side by side with the new guy. So they're actually about the same height. Whoa, try not to fall over, dude. But the new one does look a little more compact. Not as much kibble hanging off. I mean, he's still got kibble on the back, but it's a little more compact and easy to manage than the ones on the original. Deco differences, I mean, they have, this one has chrome silver. This is just painted silver, chrome red. This is just painted red, but similar deco on the chest, similar deco on the legs. Now, the Legacy one does have a small Autobot symbol in white outlined on the forearm, whereas the original Sideburn and Speed Breaker had a red, shiny painted Autobot symbol on that forearm. But it does appear that some of the wheels that are kind of sticking out on the original are kind of hidden away a little bit on the new one. Similar heads. They both have that kind of one-eye monocle type thing. They both have the gold stripe on the uh, side of the head. Similar shapes. Definitely a nice homage with the new one. The Legacy Sideburn is five inches tall, identical in height to the original. So here I have no complaints about them sizing because they're both deluxes and they're similar size. All right, vehicle modes. So there is the new Legacy Sideburn in his vehicle mode. And I have to say the transformation, it's not overly complex. And they do show you putting the shield on his right arm before transforming him. I don't think it makes a difference. 
but it's got all these little pegs that are in very exacting spots. And if you don't pop them in quite right, it can look a little bit deformed. Now he is a sports car of Cybertronian design, not a particular sports car. And I see one of the pegs popped out. There we go. That's hopefully better. But yeah, as you're pushing them together, things can pop out. It's a cool looking vehicle, just, and it's got kind of lighter blue flames on the hood, but not quite exactly the one from 2001. And again, it's putting all the things in place. Things might pop out slightly. Not 100% thrilled with the transformation. Of course, you may have an easier time of it, but wasn't that fun. All right, time to put the original into his vehicle mode. So the original sideburn slash speed breaker transformed into a Dodge Viper. Also blue flames, but with white outline, so much more distinctive. You could see the Autobot symbol on the top. That is the American version only. But you could also see through the back window, the Autobot symbol there. And I'm not gonna say that this one transforming it is not also a pain in the ass. It's very clever. You have to like bend things around a lot and there are pegs, but once it comes together, I think it stays more solidly than the Legacy. Weapon storage, let's take a look at both of them here. So obviously weapon storage for the gun is on the uh, top of the Legacy and the rear bumper is the rear bumper. Here, the rear bumper gun is the rear bumper as well. The missile is attached to the bottom and it's kind of hard to see inside but there's a little peg, you gotta put it in while you're transforming it. But the little silver knife gun thing, you can stick in a post that is now deep inside the car. They're both cool looking toys. This is supposed to be Cybertronian, so that's why he's not an Earth mode, I guess. That's what they're saying. And again, I find it hilarious that this is a repaint of Shadow Striker and Shadow Part Striker is a repaint of this one. All right, rubber wheels, plastic wheels, roll test time. The Legacy. I'm impressed. Didn't expect it to roll quite so smoothly and almost off the table. Original, well, not as smoothly, but rubber wheels. They're both cool toys. I think I like the deco maybe on the earlier version, but they're not supposed to be the same car, so it's kind of makes sense. And again, the transformation, plugging things into place, a little bit difficult. This one definitely has a lot of kibble hanging off of him, almost distractingly. They both have good points, they both have bad points. So you let me know in the comments which one you feel is better, which one you'd rather have. And of course I'll put links to both of them in the description. This one is not too expensive. I actually, my original went with the Purge, so I had to repurchase. I think he went for like 30 bucks or so. So 30, 40 bucks, it depends on if you want him in the original package. If you don't care about that, you can get him pretty cheaply. I think in package, you're looking at like 60, 70, 80 bucks, somewhere around there. And this of course just came out not that long ago. So hopefully you'll be able to get it for the retail of 24.99. But both have their ups and downs. You let me know which one you like better. And if you're enjoying this content, by all means, feel free to subscribe. And while you are mulling over which one of these you like better, or if you like both, or if you're gonna get both, you can check out this video over here, which is actually a bunch of BotCon exclusives that we finally got released, you know, but new versions. And we will see you next time. As always, have fun and good hunting.